What do you mean by saying we need to be totally immersed in truth? Well, this is, what, this is a state that I feel that many people who first hear about divine truth and divine love don't understand very much about because they don't understand the sincerity of the state. And this is being so committed to understanding not only external truth but internal truth that you spend most of the time in your day-to-day -day life investigating it. So, so I think the average person who hears anything spiritual generally spends very, very little time investigating it. What they might do is they spend a bit of time hearing it and then they don't spend much other time. They just get involved in their day-to-day -day life till the next day or the next few days and then they look at it again and do the same thing. When you're totally immersed in truth, it's not like that. If you really desperately want to have a relationship with God, and you desire that relationship with all your heart, you will want to be totally immersed in truth every single day of your life. You want to know what God's truth is every single day of your life. Mm. You won't be avoiding it any single day of your life. You won't try to have a happy day in order to avoid it. You won't also try to have a sad day in order to avoid it. You won't try to do anything in order to avoid discovery of more truth. You won't create your lifestyle so that it av avoids the confrontation of truth. You won't, you won't stop being with different people who avoid the confrontation of truth. Right? You, to, to personally, I mean, avoid the confrontation of truth. You will engage every single thing that happens in your life, every email, every <laughs> Facebook interaction, if you have Facebook, uh, every personal interaction with a person, every phone conversation, every interaction with nature, every interaction with your day-to-day -day life at work and at home, every interaction with your children, your parents, your family, your close associates, your extended associates and general people in the world, every interaction will be you wanting to know more truth. That's what it means to be totally immersed in truth. Mm. Mm. <laughs> now, the average person uh, I feel who even hears about divine truth is not engaged in discovery of truth in that manner. Remember, to, to do it, you would also have to engage at understanding all of the qualities of divine truth that we've just discussed, all the 14 qualities and attributes you would, you would want to engage in, yeah. in this process. Yeah. majority of people don't want to do that. No, just a single one it can be quite confronting. Exactly. For the majority, um, we're lucky if we even are engaging one of the aspects or qualities of God's truth mm. in our day-to-day -day life, let alone the whole 14 every single day. Yeah. In your notes here, you've written some <coughs> statements that are actually what it would be like if I was totally immersed in truth. So perhaps I could read them and just uh, you could comment. So... Um, I'm totally immersed in truth. I've learned that when I act in complete harmony with what I know to be God's truth, I'm also acting in complete harmony with God's laws of love. <coughs> this means that I give each situation I'm personally involved in the best potential for the best possible outcome. Mm. I feel this is very important as, a, again, an exercise of our will. Um, what I notice people doing is they almost explain away why they have acted out of harmony with what they know love to be. You know, they say things like, oh, I'm not that developed yet, or, or oh, well, in this situation I didn't feel it applied, or, you know, there's all sorts of internal justifications that people have. When, we have the, when we're totally immersed in truth, we understand the importance of truth in our day-to-day -day life. So much so that we see that every time we act in harmony with truth, we're acting in harmony with law. That gives every single event that you're personally involved in the best possible outcome. For everyone involved. For everyone involved. Yeah. Not only yourself, but every single person involved who's involved in your life in that particular interaction. You, by engaging this particular law, mean, have, have honoured the fact in your soul that you are giving everybody the best possible gift, mm -hmm. every, every single person around you. Now that to me is a, is a wonderful show of whether a person is acting in harmony with truth 
or am totally immersed in truth. Instead, what I see happening a lot of times is people justify the error constantly. Mm -hmm. They justify why they should continue believing the error. They justify why they should continue acting the error, acting out of harmony with love and acting out of harmony truth. They just they say things like, oh, it's not a perfect world and I'm not perfect yet, mm -hmm. as a justification of acting out of harmony with love and out of harmony with truth. These are all signs that you're not totally immersed in truth because if you were, you would not be ever saying these particular things. And the, the, there's a big lack of understanding that every step we make towards God's truth and acting in harmony with that truth actually maximises positive potentials for everyone. Exactly. And, and so also, it's the most loving thing we could do. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, that, and that, that is the thing that I feel that a lot of people are forgetting about truth. They, when they act, you know, by dishonestly or they don't tell the truth or they don't act in harmony with the truth, they are, they are basically choosing to not love. Mm. And, and, and every time you choose to not love, you are damaging your soul. Yeah. You're actually doing something more that you're going to have to at some point in the future compensate for. So you can see why most people never reach at one with God while on earth, because in the course of a day, there's many justifications for choosing to act out of harmony with love, which means that even though they might have a longing for God's love in the morning, during the day they are chosen to act out of harmony with it, which now has caused additional damage to the soul that would need to be comp comp compensated for. Yeah. And, and I it's very, very damaging to yourself and to other people, of course. Yeah. 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 I know it just observing others and even from my own life, sometimes we just come up to a, a relatively small fear and in that moment we choose to dishonour what we know uh, to be truth or exactly. God's laws in that situation. And actually by doing that, by stepping away from just perhaps short term, I, I sometimes say to people like three seconds of discomfort really, we actually create like three months of difficulties, law of compensation, having to look at what went on. Yep. And, and we actually, the converse is true, isn't it? We, when we act in harmony with truth, we maximise the positive potentials. Yep. When we choose to ignore what we already know, because we want to avoid a little bit of discomfort maybe, yep. um, then we actually generate a whole heap of negative possibilities for everyone involved. Not only that, those negative possibilities could potentially go on for months and even years and even centuries, yep. depending on the different choices that people yep. make. Yep. So, so this is what we need to understand about error. Error not only causes a problem in the moment, yep. it causes a problem for the rest of the person's life until the error is addressed. Whereas truth not only has a benefit in the moment, but it has a benefit to the person the rest of their life. And everyone else. And yeah. everyone else. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. And if we really were to, if we understood that about truth, we would never avoid it. No. Never avoid it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, next one. Mm. I've learned to be in personal truth at all times, with all people and under all circumstances no matter what the potential outcome will be, because I will then be in harmony or be brought into harmony with God's laws, which support my acting in harmony with love and truth. Mm. So when we look at this particular subject, what is it that you feel like about it when you, when you read it? Uh, well, in this statement is inherent that it's at all times and with all people. There's no exceptions. Yes. So I'm... I'm um, it's across the board, I've made a decision when I'm immersed in truth that I will always be truthful. Yep. And also here you're saying, I, it might not be, I might be just truthful about my personal truth yep. and that might, be, ha might have to be corrected. But by engaging in this way, I allow the possibility of that correction to happen. Exactly. Rather than just avoiding it. Exactly. So a lot of people use the excuse that um, are... I didn't act that way because I don't know for certain whether that's true or not. Well, my suggestion is this. Do what you think is the truth at the moment and then let the law, God's laws of truth, correct you if you're wrong. Yeah. 
allow, and if you're humble, you would choose to do that. You would do the best with what you currently know. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't choose to not act. You wouldn't choose to avoid. You would choose to do the best with what you currently know. Then you would be open to change, showing you that maybe what you currently knew wasn't enough. And you would let yourself go through that process. Yeah. So it's a bit like the child when it gets up to walk. The child doesn't go to itself, I'm not going to try to walk because I'm going to fall over. The child says, I'm going to walk because there's a lot of advantages in walking. <laughs> I can, <laughs> I can scoot around now. Feet. I don't have to wear out my knees. It's a lot easier to get around. <laughs> I can climb higher. Yeah. There's a lot of advantages to walking. So the child doesn't choose to stay crawling right? just because it's afraid of walking. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look at the average person when it comes to truth, many times we choose to stay crawling when it comes to truth rather than get up and walk because we're afraid of what walking might do. Just afraid to fall over. We're afraid to fall over. We're afraid to make a mistake. And, and honestly, living a life based around fear of mistakes causes a lot of damage to your soul. Mm -hmm. You're actually causing damage to your desires and intentions. You're causing damage to your passions. You're causing damage to your personality because you're suppressing your personality. So it's very, very damaging to your soul to choose to do that. Now, the child, when it gets to try to walk, it doesn't do that. It just gets up and it knows what it wants and it goes for it, even though it possibly knows that it might fall over doing it. Mm. It'll just get up and try again. And we often, as adults, don't have that same attitude because we're afraid of dealing with certain emotions. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, absolutely. All right, next one. Mm -hmm. I've learned to state God's truth at all times, with all people and under all situations, mm -hmm. no matter what the potential outcome will be, when given the opportunity to do so by others and their own exercise of their own free will. Yes. So this is saying, basically, that I, I choose at all times, in all circumstances, in all situations, to share what I know is God's truth on any matter. And so this and I is... I choose to live it. This is... In every situation. Go on. Sorry. Presumably, this is truth that we've felt because we can't receive it any other way. Well, we wouldn't probably be living it without feeling. But even if it's something that we know to be true but don't feel just yet, I would still choose to do it. Mm -hmm. That's the reality because I honour the fact that I know it but not yet feel it. I know that there's errors in me that cause me to not yet feel it. But I would allow the process to expose the error. Yeah. So I would even choose to do it then. So if I know that yelling and screaming at somebody is not, is not a loving thing, and yet I still feel like yelling and screaming, I wouldn't yell and scream at them <laughs> because I would choose to do what God's truth would dictate to me in that particular situation, yeah. not my own truth. My own truth would say, yeah, go and have a good yell and scream at them. God's truth says, no, no, don't do that. You're going to damage people that way. You're going to damage your own soul that way. But the second half is the important thing. Yes, very important. Yeah. Yeah. So if we reread the second part of it. Uh, when given the opportunity to do so by others mm -hmm. and their exercise of their own free will. Yes. Now, this is what many people forget. People give you an opportunity through the exercise of their will. You have no right to share truth with others except when you're personally engaged in it. So in other words, if you're in my life, I now must share the truth, mm -hmm. right? Because it's my life. But if, but if you're involved with, say, Igor, who's behind this camera in front of me at the moment, and you want to engage Igor with a certain truth, and it's none of my business at all, then, then I have to wait until you or Igor express a desire to know the truth yeah. before I could share it with you. Yeah. That's honouring the free will of the individual. Yeah. So, so I notice very many things going on around us that are very much out of harmony with love and truth a lot of the times, and I say nothing until placed in the situation where one or more of the people involved has asked me about the issue. Mm -hmm then I say everything possible 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that the circumstance and their will will allow me to say. Yeah. yeah. While honouring my own love of myself in the process. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we would do if we were totally immersed in truth. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Point four, I've learned to live my life fearlessly in truth at all times. I'm no longer governed by personal fear and personal fear becomes subordinate to the higher importance of living in harmony with God's truth. Yes, this is an extremely important thing to understand. To be totally immersed in truth, we have to be prepared to subordinate our fear to God's truth. Most people are not prepared to do this. This is the reason why the majority of people who have heard divine truth do not progress, is because they are unwilling to subordinate their own fear. In other words, if we, put a, if we draw it like a diagram or an illustration, yeah. imagine if God's truth is here, the majority of people have a certain level of fear associated with living or practicing that truth mm -hmm. here. That means their fear dominates everything. The fear is not subordinate to the truth. The fear has is the God. It's the thing that determines what will happen. And the truth has subordinate to their fear, unfortunately. What we need to do and what we would do if we were totally immersed in truth is we would subordinate purposefully the fear. We would make the fear be less important. We're not we can't um, we, we still might have a lot of it mm -hmm. but we would view it as less important yeah. than honoring the truth emotionally inside of us we would feel that it's more important to honor the truth even though I'm afraid yeah. right? that's what we would do in every situation so there's some situations that I'm, I'm very afraid still because I've still got some fear in me about certain situations mm -hmm. And yet I still choose to engage the truth because the way I see my fear is that I must always make it subordinate to the truth. Mm -hmm. I feel it. I let myself feel my fear still. I let myself honestly feel what it's about, but I still act in harmony with what the truth dictates and not in what my fear would dictate. And really what I observe you doing is that um, there might be a level of fear within you, but because of your honour of truth and your really your embodiment of just about everything that we've talked about in this entire series, mm. truth naturally, fear naturally becomes subordinate, not because you've released some fear, but because the truth is it's so honoured yes, by it's you. it's more important to me than yeah. anything. Because the only way uh, we can reduce our fear is to release it, isn't it? Mm. But we can still honour truth above that fear, can't yes. we? Yes. Yeah. So, so this is about not where your fear level is. No. It's about where you place your honour of truth. Yeah. Now, most people I observe place their honour of truth below their fear. So in other words, they're prepared to be honest and truthful as long as they're not afraid. Yeah. Most people do not honour their truth above their fear. In other words... Even though they're afraid, they're still truthful. Mm -hmm. Most people don't do that. The difference between myself and most people is that single difference, uh, often the times. The truth to me is of supreme importance. It, it is, uh, next to love, it is the most important thing in the universe. And in fact, in some ways, it's just as important as, than, uh, as love because it leads you to love. Mm -hmm. It leads you to a greater love. Mm -hmm. So you could say that love is dependent upon it. Right, in some to, to a large extent, dependent yeah. upon you absorbing more truth. This is why truth is so important in your life. Now, if you place it as this very high priority in your life, number one priority in your life, you will eventually be led to God, who will eventually become your number one priority. You'll be led to love. You'll be led to humility. You'll be led to a lot of other things if you place it as a high priority in your life and you honour it. It's when we dishonour it or when we view our fear as more honourable or more important or as a high priority, that we get ourselves into extreme difficulties mm -hmm. when it comes to our progression. We also eventually choose to do things that are very damaging to our soul when our fear governs our actions. So to be totally immersed in truth, we have to learn to subordinate fear. And that doesn't mean to suppress it. You've got to feel it. You've got to feel the emotion of it, but not honour it not do what it dictates. 
And that, I feel, feel is a very important part of being totally immersed in truth. Mm. Mm. Well, that's all I have on my page to discuss with you today. Yep. It's been really enjoyable talking about the qualities of divine truth. Yeah, so I just uh, as a general comment to everyone that's been listening about the qualities of divine truth, hopefully going through the qualities has enabled you to come to understand how God's truth actually works and how you personally can start to discover God's truth for yourself because all of these attributes and qualities of God's truth are an important part of anything that's presented to you. So, so allow yourself to see what's presented to you in the world, whether it's a religious thought, a philosophical thought, a political thought, or any other type of teaching. Allow yourself to be, be presented it, and then analyse it through those qualities and ask yourself, do, does it have that quality about it? Does it have this quality about it? And you will find, if you do that, you will find it very much more easier <laughs> more <laughs> simple or easier? Well, I feel like it would be a lot easier for you to come to determine what is God's truth in comparison to what is just mankind's ideas. The world is full of millions of ideas. The majority of them are mankind's ideas. None of them, many, a lot of these man, man, men's ideas, you could say almost all of them are not God's ideas and therefore not God's truths. And so what we need to do is come to see how to determine what is God's truth in comparison to mankind's doctrines and ideas. And I feel if you just apply those 14 rules to anything you examine, you will be quite easily able to throw away a lot of things as not being God's truth because they're just obviously mankind's ideas and they don't match the qualities of truth. And you will also be able to accept a lot of things that mankind doesn't accept because they will become very plain to you as being God's truths. So hopefully this process will help, this, this discussion has helped you go through that process in a much more active manner. So thanks for your time and we'd like to thank to uh, Lena and Igor for their time doing our recording today. Thanks guys. <laughs>